What's up guys, today we're gonna cover the best opening for white for under 1600 rated players. And this is called the Evans Gambit. By the way, this is a completely sound opening, you can use it on any level, theoretically. Kasparov used it against Vish Anand in a classical game and won. Materialistic Stockfish says that this position after the pawn sacrifice is equal, so it's not something that can possibly be refutable. But the beauty of using this opening on the level below 1600 is that players of that level typically are not good at defending and they collapse within just three moves and I'm not exaggerating. Anyway, let's start from the very beginning. The Evans Gambit arises from the King's Pawn move, Pawn to E4, and after your opponent responds Pawn to E5, you go Knight of 3 attacking this Pawn, Knight of C6, Bishop C4, Bishop C5, we've got the Italian game, and here, instead of playing the classical Pawn C3 or any other trivial move, you start your attack right out of the gate with the move Pawn to B4. You sacrifice a Pawn for your quick development and attack, just like it happens in any other Gambit. Now, Black can take it with either a knight or a bishop, and in the vast majority of the cases they will. Not taking this pawn doesn't really make that much sense, because if the bishop goes back somewhere, you can just keep marching this pawn forward, attack this knight, if it goes away, you can possibly pick up this pawn on e5, so overall that just doesn't make much sense for black at all. Now, they could take it with either a knight or a bishop, but it doesn't really matter for you, because you're gonna play pawn to c3 in both cases, forcing their piece to go back, so whether they took it with a knight or bishop again does not really matter, let's say they take it with a bishop or with a knight, you play pawn c3, now this piece usually will go back somewhere to c5 or to a5, so that would lead to the same position. Now, let me show you to the database, I've told you that players below 1600 are gonna lose this in three moves, let me prove the point. Here we have a database of games and in the lower right corner you can see the stats of moves played. I've filtered it out based on players rated 1600 and below, and now let's see what happens. You can see that pretty much always they capture over here on b4, you play pawn to c3, now in the majority of the cases they go bishop to c5, we're gonna talk about bishop a5, another common move in a moment, let's start with the most common move, bishop to c5. You play pawn to d4, attacking him once again, and you can see that 94% of players, pretty much everyone, takes here on d4. Now, instead of recapturing immediately, I recommend that you castle first. The drawback of recapturing immediately is that they've got to move bishop b4, which saves the day for them, they get this vital tempo to attack your king. And we do not want that, so instead of that you just castle. And after that, just look at this, once again the most common move for black by 4 is pawn takes c3, 66% of games were played that way. And that is already a losing error. So pawn takes c3, misses out this bishop takes f7 explosive tactics that wins the game, I'll show you in a minute exactly how. Now, you can see that the second most played move by black is knight to f6, which is yet another error, and in this case, if I turn on Stockfish, you can see that it's already plus, almost plus 3 by white. So you take over here, attack the bishop, if the bishop goes back, you can then play pawn to e5, now you attack this knight, and you can in the future even push d5 and attack the other one, you've got bishop g5 at hand to, you know, attack the queen, and you completely smash black, it's already plus 4 almost by white. Anyway, let's slow down and let me show you move by move exactly how you win. So after you played pawn to c3 attacking this bishop, it needs to go. In most cases they go bishop c5, which is actually wrong. Playing bishop a5 is more accurate. As they go bishop c5, they give you a tempo for playing d4 and attacking this bishop. Anyway, we're gonna cover both options. So after d4, they take over here on d4, and as we discussed, I suggest that you castle, not letting them the option to give you check after bishop b4. So you castle first. And now you want to take back this pawn on d4 with a tempo, attacking the bishop, creating your beautiful pawn chain in the center of the board, and that just looks scary by black. And that's why it's very natural for them to take here on c3, trying to eliminate the problem that way. But it fails due to a little tactics. Bishop takes f7, and you start your attack right away. Now, this is not even a sacrifice, because after king takes, you follow up with queen to d5, and thanks to this double attack, you're gonna get your piece back right on the next move, while you completely expose his king, grab that pawn on f7, and now you'll continue your attack of the opponent's king. They usually bring their king back to e8. At this point, you could take his bishop right away, but I recommend that you play an evil in between move queen to h5 check. This induces the move pawn to g6, which further weakens their position, and we'll see in a moment why it is so advantageous for you. It gives you additional options to attack. Now, queen takes c5, you pick up the bishop back, 
And what we've got here is, as a result of this little tactical operation is his position is completely destroyed. And we hadn't even need to sacrifice anything to achieve that. Let's also not forget that his king has moved already and therefore it lost its right to castle. And so as they go something, let's say pawn d6 or whatever, now we need to move the queen, we can pick up this pawn and also attack this rook in the corner of the board. And generally speaking, your plan is plain simple. At some point, as you develop your pieces, somehow you print the bishop over here or over here to g5 and attack the queen, you're gonna break open in the center with a move pawn to e5, put the rook on e1 and checkmate his king and then celebrate and party hard. That's your master plan. But right now your opponent has a great chance of losing the game right away. Because queen from c3 attacks this rook on h8. That's why we wanted this pawn to be on g6, not on g7. You can see that now we make use of the weakness of this pawn diagonal. And if they play queen f6, which I think is the most played move by black, it's actually funny that you may not even avoid an exchange of the queens, but just play bishop b2 and reinforce your pressure along this diagonal. It turns out that even if they trade queens, that doesn't make their position any better because they still can't save their rook without sacrificing some other material. They'll probably have to play knight f6 and give up the knight just to save their rook, but either way, you are winning. All right, we just covered the move bishop to c5, to which we played d4 with the tempo. So now let's come back to the second main option of black is bishop to a5, which is in fact a better option for black, but most of your opponents aren't familiar with that. So after bishop a5, you're actually going to play this exact same moves. You're going to play pawn to d4, hit in the center, threatening potentially pawn to d5 to chase away this knight. And in most cases, they're going to take here on d4. By the way, in this video, I'm not trying to like analyze every possible variation, not to overwhelm you, like what if they play d6 or something. If you want to go deeper into this, I've got another video about this variation, which you may check out later after watching this one, if you really want to get serious about this. But also don't overcomplicate matters for you. You don't have to know everything about the Evans Gambit to play it successfully. All you need is just to know it a little bit better than your opponent, and that is enough to crush them. And let's not forget that they know nothing about it, and therefore after watching this video, you have everything that you you need in order to start winning with the Evans Gambit. Anyway, let's analyze the main move, pawn takes. After that, you cannot recapture immediately because the pawn is pinned down to the king. Therefore, you castle first, and now you are ready to get your pawn back and build up this beautiful pawn in the center, threaten pawn d5. Therefore, in most cases, they will take here on c3. And as they keep wasting time picking up your pawns, you get a greater and greater lead in development. And that's how you are ready to start crushing that right away. So what you do is you play queen b3, taking aim at this weak pawn on f7, and you're stacking your battery along this diagonal. So bishop takes f7 is a real threat attacking the king. Now what can they do about that? They cannot defend it with the knight from h6, because from here you can just change it with your dark square bishop, and after that you still grab this pawn on f7. So that's not an option. Therefore, in order to defend it, they had to bring their queen out, which is generally speaking something they would not wish to do, as in an opening, if you bring your queen out too early, that often gives your opponent more extra temples while attacking that queen. Anyway, they have to defend this pawn somehow, so let's say they play queen to e7. Now you can get this pawn back on c3, plus from here the knight threatens to go forward on d5, and that's going to be quite unpleasant, as from d5 it's going to attack you know, this queen on e7, put pressure onto this pawn on c7, and overall dominate over the position. Usually they take here on c3, you recapture with the queen, we already know that from here the queen attacks this pawn on g7, therefore black needs to do something about that, they usually play the knight to f6. And at this point, they hope that they're going to castle on the next move and enjoy their extra pawns, but that's not going to happen. You're going to keep attacking. That's the whole point. You have a lead in development, therefore you want to rush into the attack and checkmate them while they're still undeveloped. So the first thing you do is you play bishop to a3, finalizing your development plus hitting the queen. If queen moves away, our bishop will control each diagonal, therefore not letting them to castle. And so they go pawn d6. They're still hoping to castle, but it's not going to come true. You break open in the center of the board with a move pawn to e5. As their king stands in the middle of the board, it makes sense for you to open the central file so that you can start attacking it directly. After a pawn to e5, they cannot take it with a pawn because that will drop the queen. Therefore, knight takes e5 is what they'll usually play. And now knight takes e5, they still cannot recapture with a pawn because it's pinned down to the queen. Therefore, queen takes c5 is forced, and of course we do not want to just trade queens, we want to keep attacking in the middle game. So you go rook e1, very natural, and that skews the queen and the king, and basically wins the game. They tr may try to cover it for a second with knight to e4, but here you can win the game with probably lots of different moves, 
the most like fascinating one is rook takes e4 a temporary sacrifice because after a queen takes you follow up with rook to e1 renewing the same threat once again and this time you get to the queen there is nothing black can do now and you win the game you keep attacking on the next moves like queen to e1 checks the king and uh, i mean you have an advantage in development in material and you keep attacking that's going to be simple like you just need to bring your queen forward and attack computer shows queen a5 like quite an interesting maneuver threatening this pawn and as black goes b6, you shift the queen to d5 with a double threat of queen takes f7 or queen takes the rook, and that is game over. And I know what you may be thinking at this point. You may be thinking, Igor, it's all cool, but I'm gonna forget all these moves, and what if my opponent plays something else, and I don't know what to do, and I lose? Well, actually, I never recommend that you just try to memorize moves mechanically. We're not computers, we're not supposed to do that. And frankly speaking, fighting and attacking moves is the easiest thing in chess, right? So probably when you saw some strong players analyzing games and they were saying it's like natural for white to do that. But you've been wondering like, why is this move any better than any other option? And it doesn't seem natural or intuitive for you at all to play that. So if you felt that way, I've got a course called the Grandmaster's Positional Understanding, where I break down exactly how I think while playing chess, how other GMs do that, so that you see those simple guiding principles that you can follow and you can know why those right moves are so natural for advanced level players and how you can, you can model that in your own games. And if you're curious, I'll drop the link in the description down below the video and you can check it out. Hope that you enjoyed the video. Let me know if you have any questions about the Evans Gambit and I'll talk to you soon.